What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to be comparing DX Tori with Shadow Play. If you look on the screen you will see on the left we have Shadow Play and on the right we have DX Tori. It should be split screen so going up the middle you'll kind of see a faint divider where the video kind of goes from one to the other and in the top left corner you will see if it's yellow with the frame rate uh, that means DX Tori is recording and you'll see that on the right of the screen. If it's green that means DX Tori is not recording and the whole screen will be shadow play. If you kindly pay attention to the frame rate at the top left, you will see what I'm getting right now with no DX Tori recording. Now, kind of make a mental note of this, and when it turns yellow, notice how much the frame rate drops. This is because DX Tori has quite a performance hit. It kind of varies from game to game. Minecraft is really an extreme case because it has such a high frame rate. But you can expect to see a small to moderate uh, hit on your frame rate when you're capturing with DX Tori. However, if you're capturing with Shadow Play, since it's pretty much entirely done on your graphics card, which has to be an NVIDIA GTX 600 series or better, um, since it's doing it on the video card itself, you have pretty much no performance hit. Right here, you'll see a freeze frame on a section of Minecraft. And if you look on the left in the shadow play side, you can see there's a lack of detail in the trees. Um, if you look on the right side on the DX Tori capture, you'll see that you can see perfectly all the pixels in the trees. So that's one thing. I mean, you won't normally notice that on YouTube because once you upload it to YouTube, it kind of ruins your, your video quality with its own encoder. So, I mean, now that the, the, the footage is continued, you can really not see much of a difference between Shadow Play and DX Story. Um, I just wanted to do that freeze frame to give uh, a comparison of the source material. So now we go into Wreckfest, which is um, a really a high motion, a lot of detail game that is really troublesome for the encoders to to encode. Um, it's kind of hard to see because there's such motion, and you probably don't even notice it on YouTube. Uh, there's so much motion as both sides are probably pretty low quality. So uh, in a second you'll see another freeze frame and you can really see... Uh, the difference between Shadow Play and DX Story, which only really applies to your source material. So if you're uploading to YouTube, uh, the, the, the difference is really negligible. So I'm going to go into, you'll see a, uh, a, a table at the end of this video that has all my breakdown of the pros and cons of each one. But I'll kind of go through a couple of key points here during the video. Um, as I said, uh, the performance really favors Shadow Play. It's almost no performance hit to do Shadow Play. Uh, as far as quality is concerned, uh, the video quality on Shadowplay is also, it's really good. Um, like for YouTube purposes, it's perfectly fine. You can do 130 megabits per second uh, capture for the video. Uh, as for DX Story, you can, depending on which codec you use, you can, you know, I use the UT video codec for my videos. And it's a lossless video codec, so it's pretty much a one-to-one -one representation of the actual uh, source game that I'm playing, but its bitrate is like 500 megabits per second and it makes gigantic files. So for instance, a 10 minute video on Shadowplay, you're looking at about just over 2 gigabytes. But using UT Video Codec on DX Tori, you're looking at 36 gigabytes. So if hard drive capacity is an issue for you, you're definitely going to want to stick with, with Shadowplay. As far as audio is concerned, Shadowplay only records a single audio channel, which means if you're recording your microphone and the game, it'll put it all, kind of mix it in with one one audio channel. In DX Tour, you can add a channel for as many things as you want. Like you can have, you can add an audio channel for game, and then you can add another audio channel that's completely separate for uh, your vocals. And then you can add more if you want, like maybe for TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever. So it's really flexible in that sense. As far as audio is concerned, the quality for Shadowplay is really, it's not that good, it's okay. Um, you're looking at about 192 kilobits per second AAC for Shadowplay, which is like a, you know, a 
uh, kind of like an MP3. It's like a, a sort of high quality MP3, not real high quality, but like CD quality MP3. And the X story you can choose basically lossless wave file, so you get more control over the final format like that. Both options will support frame rates up to um, 60 FPS, and the X story actually gives you the option of doing 120 FPS, but good luck recording 120 frames per second uh, in anything but like a really low quality. So, I mean, I don't know. It's there. I guess it's future proof. Um, Shadowplay uses a variable frame rate instead of a constant frame rate. So, uh, Shadowplay will kind of. It'll vary the frame rate from 60. Like, if you set it to 60, it can use, like, if there's no action on the screen, it might use, like, 40. Uh, whereas DX Story is always 60 if you set it to 60. And Adobe Premiere has an issue with that. It makes your audio go out of sync, and it's really a pain. So, you really have to. Uh, take the shadow play video if you're using a premiere and re-encode it to 60 fps using uh, something like handbrake um, I've had kind of mixed luck with that. I was able to uh, re-encode it, but premiere didn't want to play it back So I downloaded a program called Avanti and I was able to convert the video to uh, From the shadow play format to UT video, which was massive, but that plays back fine in, in premiere if you're using Sony Vegas Everybody appears to say that Sony Vegas works fine. So if you're using Vegas, then have at it. It supports the Shadowblade files, no problem. Um, anything else? Uh, let's see. Shadowplay is like an instant replay. They call it Shadow Mode. So it's always recording the last 20 minutes of your gameplay. And you can hit a button and it'll just dump that 20 minutes out to a file. Uh, DX Story doesn't support anything like that. You'd have to basically record all the time. And... Um, Shadowplay can record your desktop. That's really useful if you're doing like tutorials in Windows or uh, installing mods for games and stuff like that. Um, it's also worth noting that Shadowplay will only record DirectX games, but you can get around that by using the desktop capture, which is what I do for Minecraft. So that works fine. And DX Tori seems to not really care. It'll record almost any game. Once in a while, I'll have issues recording a game, but there's a lot of um, options you can kind of play around with uh, really advanced options in DX Story that will kind of help it to record these games that it doesn't support. So generally you can record almost any game with DX Story. And that's the end of the comparisons. If you want, you can take a look at this chart that kind of lists everything I went through in more detail and kind of maybe even a, probably a little more clear than I was able to explain it. You can kind of see it firsthand. You can kind of look at the pros and cons of each one. And I'm sure you will see a lot of comments in the video. I mean, I'm not an expert on this by any means. I'm just kind of doing my own testing and uh, yeah. I'm sure there's lots more information in the comments if you want to take a look down there. One thing to note is that both of these are recorded at the same time. So I've recorded Shadowplay and DX Tori at the same time. And there's no problem doing that. They do, like One doesn't affect the quality of the other one, regardless of what you might see in the comments. Some For some reason, people think that recording them both at the same time affects the quality. It doesn't. For one thing, Shadowplay takes the, the, the image right off the video card. And I mean, basically, DX Story does that as well, but it kind of goes, does it in a roundabout way. But the only thing, the only effect you'll see is if there's a frame drop, it's probably, you know, DX Story might be having an issue writing a file. It will pull the frame right down below 60, and that will show up in the Shadow Play video. But I mean, quality wise, they're the same. You're not going to see a difference. You might just might see a frame drop once in a while.